Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video, we're going to be trapping kestrels, American kestrels, with a ball chatry trap system. If you've been through my videos, you probably already know, I wrote a book on trapping. If you want more details, feel free to get it online. It's called Trapping Essentials, and I go into a lot greater detail, even on kestrels, about what size traps, what shapes work. Today, though, I wanted to keep it very simple and just use a ridiculously simple trap. But first, if you're new to falconry, the term ball chatry, it's a strange term. It's a type of trap that's been used for thousands of years. It comes out of India and Southeast Asia. Originally, this trap was made out of bamboo slats that sort of made a cage, little strips of bamboo. Picture like big, thick chopsticks split in half. And then there were nooses placed on the outside that were made out of braided horsetail hair. Now today we don't do that. Today typically we make traps out of chicken wire, hardware cloth, uh, some sort of wire mesh, and most falconers use fishing line, monofilament fishing line, to make slip knot nooses to ensnare the toe or leg of a bird for trapping. Now this is a technique that's used all over. It's used by bird banders, uh, it's used by biologists, it's used by falconers, and it's also used by uh, institutions whose, if a bird escapes, this is a time-honored technique, is the ball chatry trap is a system that's very good for uh, recovering a lost bird or trapping a new bird. This system uh, is completely encloses the bait. Usually people use mice. If you go to pet stores, you can find feeder mice that are bred for the sole purpose of uh, feeding snakes and, and, and predatory lizards. Watch this video. When you're watching this video, notice that because these mice are so domesticated, they have no fear or knowledge of what's going on. They're like, oh, hi, bird that's trying to eat me. Meh. They're not the least bit stressed or alarmed, which is an interesting point to bring up and to watch for. Today, what I'm doing is we're, uh, which by the way, happy International Falconry Day. It's World Falconry Day today. And so I went out and we, uh, with some friends, I'm trying to get some birds for some new falconers who wanted kestrels. So went out looking. Used a very basic, boring, lightweight ball chatry trap. Now, I will often do bigger traps that have a stronger weight, but I, in this one, I made a trap that was so small and so lightweight that a kestrel can easily drag it without stressing out uh, their legs or their joints. The fishing line is very small, monofilament. So again, I get very bland, boring. Uh, and again, if you read my book, you'll see I usually recommend painting a trap black, but this is just, eh, just a cage that I made with nooses. Went out looking for kestrels and it didn't take long before I found a gigantic female kestrel. So I put the trap out, had a good setup in a nice open area. And she came down pretty quick and uh, hovered above it and then banked off and flew away. And I thought, well, I lost her. Then I see she flew up to a tree, still had a good view, and a male flew up next to her. And I thought, ah, eh, you know what? This is probably an adult bird, a haggard bird, because I bet they are a mated pair. Therefore, even if I catch her, probably gonna need to set her free because we don't uh, we don't fly haggard birds. She came down and began walking all around the trap. It's very good to see this behavior and understand it. When you see her walking around, one of the things I point out in my book is the idea of putting sort of a skirt, just a flat piece of hardware cloth around your trap with nooses. So even if they never touch the trap itself and are just walking around it, investigating it suspiciously, then they might still get caught. And you see in the early part of this video, had I done that, she already would have been captured in a noose. It's, it's November, but it's surprisingly hot today. She was a well-fed bird, and she was just looking at it, interested, a little angry. But almost as soon as she starts walking around, a red-tailed hawk landed in the tree next to her mate. And her mate starts dive-bombing that, and she keeps looking up. Oh, do I want to go down with a red tail up there? And then, right overhead, you don't see it in this video, but a prairie falcon began chasing a huge flock of starlings, and then a merlin falcon is like, oh, and starts dive bombing the prairie falcon. So you got a prairie chasing starlings, Merlin, merlin chasing the prairie, male kestrel dive bombing a red tailed hawk, and then a raven lands in the tree next to the red tail. All of this commotion is going around. I'm amazed she didn't bump. Normally, in that circumstance, she's vulnerable, she's on the ground. She normally would have been back up and looked at the trap from a uh, from a from a from a safer vantage point. I I decided, you know what? I'm just going to let things play out. And after about ten minutes, 
she finally did decide to jump up on the trap itself and upon doing so was almost instantly caught. Now you can see in doing so, she begins to drag the trap and the mouse doesn't care and it's an extremely lightweight trap, doesn't bother her leg and I ran out and I got her. Had a good look over her. It's always wise to check the health of the bird. What I've been seeing, uh, sadly, is an increase in kestrels that will have attacked a mouse on a glue trap, which can kill the kestrel too. But if they get loose as they're eating the mouse, they'll get some of the glue wrapped around the talons. I had one last year that we trapped, and, and, and two of its talons were complete gummy-looking balls with uh, no ability to penetrate. And we got it off, released it, and so it's good to get, do a good check over in case there's anything wrong with the bird and make sure that it's, it's safe and healthy for its own good. But looking at her tail, the bottom band of her tail, that's called the subterminal band. Typically, on an adult kestrel, American kestrel, that's thicker. Usually, as a first-year bird, that's a thinner band, and then it becomes thick. On, with the adult plumage. So clearly an adult, clearly had a mate. So I set her free and she flew right up to the tree and within a minute, her mate had joined her as well. Decided to go out looking around uh, a little further, found another kestrel that was hog fat. Didn't uh, come down on the trap, but found another male out there further and set up for him. And this is good to see how different this is. Had a good setup. This is uh, a bird that's around a lot of a lot of commotion, a lot of traffic. So I was able to be fairly close and observe the whole thing. But setting the trap out, unlike the female, he was hungry. He was much more hungry. And so he just came right down in, landed on the trap, and was instantly caught. He was a very handsome bird, had a good look over him. The male and female American kestrels, of course, have radically different colors. The males have this beautiful blue on the wings, and the tail is solid red, except for one black and one white band at the bottom. Gorgeous bird, and uh, he, but he was an adult, so followed, uh, followed the rules and also the philosophy behind those rules and set him free and had a good day of it. Wasn't able to catch a first year kestrel for the people we were trapping for, but it was good to get out and I hope that it helps you to see this. It is wise to watch. I don't normally film when I go trapping, I just go trapping. Uh, so this has been fun. I'm gonna have some more trapping videos in the upcoming weeks and months, but watching the behavior, observing the mindset of a bird on or near a trap is very good for a falconer to understand what they think and how they do and improve the type of trapping that we do. Hope this video is useful or at least entertaining to you. If you haven't already, please uh, hit subscribe. It really helps me grow this channel. Good luck trapping to all of you out there trying to obtain birds and as always, happy hawking.